Hello everyone and welcome to my kingdom. In today's video, I am going to go over, in my opinion, what I think are the top five easiest aquarium plants. So I'm going to work my way backwards. So I'm going to go five, four, three, two, one, and then I'll tell you guys what's the easiest plant in the end. So these plants are all fairly beginner easy. I'll just kind of go over like a brief care just so you guys kind of get a gist on it. But if you do choose any of these plants in your aquascapes, feel free to research further. There's a ton of varieties in the plants that I'm talking about and not all plants are the same. They all have their own little preferences and requirements too. So these are also low-tech plants, so everything that I'm going to list you can grow without high light and CO2. Of course, all plants do grow better without it, but these tend to do okay and don't look leggy when they're grown this way. Just as I could say any like Ludwigia species are fairly easy but if you grow it in low tech compared to high tech they look very different. So some plants to me is like you can grow them in low tech but you shouldn't just because of the way they end up looking. I will put pictures of the plants that I have had in the past too so you guys can see what they look like and what I have achieved in low tech with them. Okay, so number five on my list are gonna be swords. Scientific name is Echinodorus, so there are a ton of variety of swords. Generally, um, you will need a substrate for them just because they are heavy root feeders. And by substrate, I just mean something that's mineral rich and nutrient rich. So you could do them with aqua soil, which I do recommend just because it is very nutrient rich and they do take a ton from their roots. You can also go with sand, but if you're going with sand, I do recommend that you put like a good amount of root tabs on the bottom of them just because the sand's not going to necessarily provide anything for them. Um, so one reason why I listed swords at the like bottom of the easiest one just because the majority of swords that you get in stores or at aquarium stores are going to be grown immersed which means they're grown in high humidity so it's a different kind of leaf than a fully submerged aquatic growth and because the majority of them are grown like that I put it as number five because when you do acquire the plant and put it into your tank a lot of it does melt away before a new plant starts growing. So if you do end up buying like any tissue cultures from PetSmart or Petco, the ones that you see in the tubes are the tissue cultures, a lot of the time they will melt back the growth that they have and then they'll grow from a very small plant in the center and that's going to be the growth that's going to be fully aquatic. And a lot of people don't know that so they think, oh no, the plant died and they kind of just throw it away when they could have had another plant grow from it. So if you get swords, be patient with swords because once they are fully submerged, they grow really well in low light and no CO2. So the majority of swords are very large plants too. They'll like grow over a foot long and get like really bushy. So they are better for bigger aquariums sometimes. Of course there are smaller sword species but not all of them are small and not all of them are big so <laughs> it's like kind of a heavy medium just know which species to choose out with your scape and on number four we have crypts or cryptocorians the reason i just put them right before swords because in my opinion they have grown better than swords for me so um i've had a few species of crypts i've had the um, pink flamingo which i ended up um killing all of that because I left it out to dry on accident. I have the green gecko and just the wentii. Of course anything green is going to grow easier for you. Um, they are also another heavy root feeder so a nutrient rich substrate or root tabs. And the thing about crypts is they, they'll grow fairly big like I've had one grow bigger than my head in a bush size but they do stay lower than swords. Swords will generally grow upwards and out whereas crypts will stay closer to the, the plant base itself. Does that even make sense? The plant, like it just stays in like a bush shape compared to swords that grow up. And again, uh, crypts are a general species. There's a ton of different types. I, I'm not even sure if I'm categorizing that correctly as a species because I think it goes cryptocorn species like pink flamingo but what I'm trying to say is like there's a ton of varieties out there and they all look different and kind of grow different too. And number three on my list I have hemianthus micranthamoide I think which is pearlweed. So what I really like about pearlweed is that it like grows super fast and basically needs nothing from you just the water. I've had tanks where I've just grown them in sand in 
normal substrate. I don't fertilize them or anything. But even in the sand, they'll like take over. It's just a super easy plant in general. So it is a stem plant in my opinion. So basically it's a stem, it grows a single stem. If you cut it, it'll grow a Y shape and grow more. But the thing I do like about Pro Weed that it's a semi-crawling plant too so you could you could use it as a background plant a mid-ground and it'll even carpet if you allow it to and not all plants are that versatile so normally carpet plants don't grow that high and mid-ground plants won't crawl i've also had like a whole tank of just pearl weed <laughs> again i think i had it in a tank that got no light and it still grew like in its like very luscious form okay number two um these are two different kinds of plants but i am just gonna group it into one just because they grow in a similar fashion so number two is gonna be anubius and bucephalandra or just boost i have these guys pretty up there just because you basically don't even need a substrate or that much fertilizer for them it's always better to fertilize but they grow so slow that sometimes excess nutrients just causes algae on their leaf more than helping them grow so like fully immersed anubius boost can just be like thrown into a cup and left like where it gets barely any light and it'll grow i'm not saying you should grow them in that condition and they will also grow better if you give them what they need but these plants can grow in that condition as the saying goes just because you can doesn't mean you just because you could just because you could doesn't mean you should okay so anubius is like a rhizome plant the the base of the leaves like the log that the leaves are coming on you don't actually want to bury them they need to be exposed to light or it'll melt and kill the whole plant and again the only thing that's like off about anubius is that a lot of the time it is tissue cultured so you do get somewhat of a melt of the whole plant or a good amount of the plant before it starts to grow the same goes for boost i think um not that they're tissue cultured but they are grown immersed a lot of the time so if they melt on you just give them some time as long as the rhizome is solid it should be able to grow a new plant and there's just like cute little plants too it's like um anubius nana petite is a very small leafed anubius and you can get like the best of the <clears throat> the best textures and like nanoscapes same with boost boost does have a small leaf but what i like is that it's like an elongated leaf so it's like a different kind of texture and it's also wavy they do come in different colors too i think um well, the majority of plants have variegated forms, but these ones are a little more like common sought after. I wouldn't say they're rare because if you have the money, you can get them. So number two, boost and anubias. Just float them around your plant, tie it down somewhere. You don't want to bury them. And coming in at number one, it's going to be moss. I don't know exactly what category moss even goes in because it's not an epiphyte. Like, I know a lot of plant words, I'm just, like, not 100% sure of, like, what the word, like, I get a gist, so don't go off anything that I'm saying, because a lot of it's probably wrong. But, uh, I wouldn't say is it a cauldron feeder? It feeds on the water. But basically, moss is, like, it clings on everything. It might be a bad thing to say, because it does cling on everything. But still, my number one plant is going to be moss. I've had java moss, Christmas moss um the more complicated mosses like pelia or some wethertain that aren't really considered mosses but they kind of just grow it's like you'll find them in the most random places and it's like i thought i killed like all of this and it's like it'll be there or if you just let a tank sit and like dry out as long as there's some kind of moisture that moss will live okay um i don't know how to exactly like tell you guys that moss is the best plant the easiest best plant like it's fairly cheap it grows so much like literally you could have just like a golf ball and within a month you'll have like this much and it's like exponential growth and basically like moss is better than any stock that you can invest in like i just think it's the best one i don't exactly know how to tell you guys besides like you could tie it to stuff you could just let it float around you can shove it into nooks and crannies don't eat it <laughs> But basically like it also needs like very minimal light to grow pretty luscious and you don't really need CO2 at all. You don't need CO2. Moss is like another plant that you could just leave in a jar somewhere that gets like that much light and it'll just it'll be happy for you like you'll forget about it and it'll be like I hope you had a great day. So it's like the the most 
easiest and common moss is going to be java moss. You can find that like even at Petco is in PetSmart too. And I wouldn't worry if you get like a small portion of it just because it does grow really fast. Like I, I really mean it when it grows fast. Especially like if you just started aquascaping and you're like oh it's not enough moss I want more plants. It's kind of like you're staring at your tank every day but like you forget about it for one day and it has a family. <laughs> Basically what I am trying to say is that if you have killed moss we have a deeper problem than a planted tank. We have a deeper problem than not enough light. If you have killed moss. Of course, um, these are just like the top five easiest plants off the top of my head. Um, I literally just threw this video together right now. If you guys have any other plants that you recommend, Feel free to put them in the bottom. <laughs> Please don't say stem plants because like I said, they don't grow right in low tech. <laughs> I'm not saying they look bad, but if you just had them grow in high tech versus low tech, it's, it's sad to see what they can be if you just give them some extra love. Corner's asking for a treat real quick. Well, he's kind of low, but he can jump. I'll see if I can bring him up. That's good enough. Here you go. So like I said, if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave in the comments so other people can see what you've done too and what plants that they should take into consideration. Um, if you didn't like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to leave me any other top five ideas or any other videos that you guys would like. And I will try to get back to all of them. Oh, um, before I leave, I also want to say that within like all these five top plants that I've mentioned, uh, there are some certain forms that do prefer the highlight in CO2. Um, there are some mosses that like almost need it to just grow or also die. But most common mosses that you're going to be able to get your hands on or find are going to be fine because like those are actually all like designer forms of the plant so it's going to be a lot more expensive and just not as readily available as the ones that you will see in stores or online. So that's going to be the end of this video and just to bring it all back it was swords, crypts, pearlweed, anubias, and boost, and moss. Bye everyone!